Come along, home with your own. Mm. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Um, it's pretty cool, you know, we've got like this little community building. Um, we're actually at 500 subscribers right now. So thanks so much for subscribing and joining our little family. Mm. Before I get into the topic of our video, which is how to add or increase the originality in your artwork, I wanted to talk about the concept of originality in art in general. So the first thing that I want to say is originality doesn't exist at all. Human beings, naturally, we are iterative. That's our whole point. We take the things that we learn from one person and then adopt those things, and then we tweak them a bit, and then somebody else sees that stuff that we've made, and then they take it and tweak. So it's this constant sharing back and forth of knowledge and like the ways of doing things. And the same is with art. I feel like the concept of originality only exists to make you feel bad about yourself. I know that that's not factually true, but that's what it feels like. You might be creating artwork that you're working very hard on, or that you think is really cool, but doesn't have quite like a, a uniqueness to it. I think what people are looking for when they say they want their artwork to be original, what they're really talking about is perceived originality. It's just like a conglomerate of so many different influences that the end product looks as if it's original, but it's really not. So if you're concerned about this idea of being original, you feel like you are just making the same stuff as everybody else, well, your problem could be. Generally, you just need to diversify your influences. So instead of taking everything from this one artist or this one creator, this one thing, you need to spread out your influences and where you're getting different stuff from. You're like giving yourself input and then your art is your output, you know? Like you have to, you have to constantly be consuming, constantly be eating and eating, and you have to never stop eating. So that's good and all that we understand that we need to diversify our influences, but that takes a lot of time <laughs> and, and that's really hard. If you are impatient, like most human beings are, I thought I could make a list of different ways that you could, like, I guess remix, I guess remix it. How would I say this? I have some ideas that you can use to take the things that you are have in your head now from consuming all these outside sources and ideas and turn them into something. So these are, these are little algorithms. <laughs> these are little art algorithms. Um, I also, I want you to remember, um, I have no clue what I'm talking about. Like, these are all just guesses. So if you don't like my ideas, then that's good. But if you do like them, I hope that you like the video so that I know you like them and subscribe so that I know that people want me to make more stuff. The first idea that I have for creating more original artwork and that is to borrow small pieces. It's like a new recipe, like everyone knows the ingredients. They've had the ingredients before, but they've never had this combination. You could go and create a list of your favorite artists then you ask yourself, what is it about this artist that I like? And then you go and you find examples of that thing that you like. And then you create an illustration using all of these different aspects. So obviously it might be a little bit clunky of a process and maybe even the final illustration you're not super happy with, but it will give you ideas as to how to put things together in a new way. And if you take small enough pieces from enough artists, you will create something that is original looking. One thing that you can try is stream of consciousness writing. And if you are somebody that is into writing, then you probably have heard of this in the past. So a stream of consciousness is a form of creative writing. You just allow yourself to write whatever comes into your mind. The most important part of stream of consciousness is that you're not limiting yourself at all. So say you're writing something and then all of a sudden your brain switches tracks, you follow that track. This can be a great way to generate, say, environments, concepts, ideas. You'll often find characters will come to you or certain combinations of, of textures and shapes, shapes and, and colors color. will come to you while you're doing this that you hadn't thought of before. I'm not a brain expert, by the way. <laughs> this is like, this is my layman's brain, brain term. So if you guys know more about the human brain, then I apologize if I'm very incorrect when I'm talking about this. But generally, 
your it's like your conscious brain is going to think more inside the box. Allowing your subconscious to run, you can break down a lot of these linear thinking patterns. This is a very concrete idea and something that's compared to some of these things a bit easier to implement. And that is taking your own photographs and using your own photographs as reference. I am definitely the type of person who uses a lot of reference from say Pinterest, from Google, from um, image sharing websites, and those references are fantastic. But the issue with that is that you are using images that other people are also using. If you're trying to increase sort of the originality in your artwork, then using um, your own reference will just naturally do that because nobody else will be drawing from your reference. Another way that you can inspire yourself and create originality in your artwork is through consuming non-visual media. So using non-visual forms of media to inspire your artwork. One of the most logical like extensions of this idea is using music to create artwork. You're not taking in any visual stimuli at all. There's nothing that can influence you that way. You're not pressured to create something visual from something visual. Um, and this will just free you up. If you like music a lot, this is just like the best. It's just like a really fun thing to do. You can use music to create abstract paintings and abstract drawings, which I think is generally what people think of when this idea is brought up. But you don't have to create abstract things. You can use music to inspire you to create characters and landscapes as well, and anything else in between. My next recommendation would be to write an artist's manifesto. An artist's manifesto can be a great way to understand more about what you personally are trying to achieve. It is easy to see what people are responding to positively and put all of your effort into pursuing that rather than thinking about, okay, so people respond positively to this idea, but I also in the background want to achieve this idea. Um, and I think it's important to combine those things together in order to be successful, if you even want to be successful, because like, who the fuck cares about success? Like, fucking stupid. Writing an artist manifesto can be a great way to refocus your art on, on what you want to achieve with it. And it can be great when you're lost. If you're lost in a piece, you can return to your artist manifesto and be like, well, what the hell did I write? And then you can read it and be like, oh, I remember the point of my artwork is minimalism or the point of my artwork is um, historical references or the point of my artwork is emphasizing textures. So you can then be like, well, what am I, am I doing these in this piece? The next idea is to have a space that you make art with zero judgment. So this is similar to stream of consciousness point but it's the visual form of that. This could be a sketchbook. This could be um, a notes app because you can sketch in the notes app on iOS. It could be a folder on your desktop. This could be a section of any of your digital art making libraries. It can help to have a space where you can make stuff without any judgment of whether it's good and bad. We get so caught up in the process of trying to make stuff that's amazing, but we lose some of the experimentation that can happen when there isn't any pressure to create something good. You'll happen upon ideas that you couldn't have come up with without experimenting. Um, another easy way to increase the originality of your artwork is through using random generators. One common way to do this is by using a random character generator. So you might go to a website and then, you know, it picks the, the type of character, the, a personality traits, blah, 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 blah. Then you have to draw this character. You can create your own randomizers. If you can code, you can code your own. You can, oh, there's wheels. You can use a wheel. There are these online wheels that you can input a bunch of ideas into. Oh, I think there's an app. Yeah, there's a wheel app and you can create various wheels and then spin them to create random prompts. Another thing that you can do to increase your artwork's perceived originality is exploring other forms of creative expression. For me, that is that is um, like music, 
that's making videos, that is embroidery, that is sewing. All of these different forms of like creative expression and exploration are very different from say illustration, but the ideas can influence that process of making like a visual illustration. The next idea that I think can be very beneficial towards accelerating this process of making original artwork is to collaborate. And collaboration can be scary for a lot of people, but so is like being alive is scary. So if you can't collaborate with people right now, that's fine. But eventually I think that it is something that you should consider because it helps you to see how other people look at the world. And understanding how other people look at and solve creative problems can be so helpful. It's like, it's like immersing yourself in a different person's creative language. This can help you to see things that you just couldn't imagine before. When I'm talking about collaborating, it could be with other visual artists, but it doesn't have to be. It could be with musicians. It could be with scientists. It could be with mathematicians. It could be with anyone. Also, it forces you to compromise. Compromise and collaboration. So the two C's. <laughs> compromise is naturally going to create something that is more, it's more inputs. It's more different perspectives coming together. Say you're actually in the end phases of a piece of art or in the middle of a piece of art and you are starting to feel like there is a lack of spice. There's a lack of spice to it. It's, it's a bit boring. It's a bit static. It looks like other things that you have seen. It might be the time to introduce a little bit of randomness to your artwork. So throwing yourself a curveball. In digital art, one way that you can do this is say you have your drawing. You can overlay a random texture over the top of the drawing. This layer of, of texture um, can give you ideas on how to, on things to add that you wouldn't have been able to think up. So with digital art, this is easy because it's easily reversible. Adding this layer of randomness to say a traditional work can be a lot scarier. In general, traditional work is a lot harder to reverse. You don't have control Z at your disposal, but I still do recommend this step if you can, if you can stomach it, if you can handle it. Messing up your artwork halfway through is a great way to discover new ways of doing things. So it's almost like sabotaging yourself, but in a controlled way. Those are my different ideas for how to make your art feel a bit more original. I hope they inspired you a little bit. I know that when I am feeling stuck, I will look up videos like this about different topics. You get thinking down one avenue and the other like pathways in your brain just can't deal. You need some help. You need some help connecting the different neural pathways in your brain. So I hope that I could help connect some of the different neural pathways in your brain today. Um, and then hopefully it will help those pathways to strengthen. And then pretty soon, um, I don't know, you'll be in like an unstoppable art machine or something. I don't know. If you have any of your own personal ideas on how to make your art feel more original, then please um, comment them if you would like, or make your own video if you have a channel. I really appreciate all of your guys' comments. They're very nice. Um, and all the likes. And um, the dislikes, you know, I'll forgive you, I guess. But no, I won't. The dislikes don't even bother me. But yes, they do. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. Bye. Bye.